it's always good to see those that's taking those selfies, those uses. I love to see that you're in the building. And we're going to hashtag it, ships. I'm in a new sermon series called Ships. But the second hashtag is going to be in between two places. Yeah, ships, in between two places. So it'll be two hashtags, one for ships. Second hashtag, in between two places. It'll make sense to some of you all because uh, some of y'all, you're in between two places. Yeah, 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 yeah. So go ahead and drop that hashtag, ships, in between two places. Uh, Check into the Forward Christian Center. And we're going to jaywalk to the book of Jonah, chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah, Jonah, chapter 1 and verse 1. We just came out of Red Hot Sermon Series, Desperate. How many of y'all enjoyed that sermon series? Yeah, we had some desperate folk for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, they were desperate for the fire. Yeah, desperate for the families. Yeah, it was was one of those sermon series that would light you on fire. And for those that ain't on fire, something wrong, because your wood wet. Yeah, something wrong, something wrong. But um, this is going to be a sermon series. I'm going to walk you guys through this ship sermon series, and it's going to be thought-provoking. It's going to be enlightening. Uh, it's going to be reproof. It's going to be correction and instruction unto righteousness, Amen. that the man or woman of God might be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good word. Yeah, yeah, because after you get up off the ground, you got to learn how to live. Yeah, nothing wrong with being slain in God's spirit. I believe in it. But when you get up, you should be a different man or a different woman. So Jonah, chapter 1 and verse 1, and it reads as this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from, from, from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them here's the text but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep let us pray Father God we love you we thank you we thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway again Father we thank you for your word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God a little more volume please and finally father we thank you for your word because man or woman shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God so it is by your word that gives light to our daily steps it is by your word that gives our faith the strength that it needs and it is by your word that gives us the ability to have life and that more abundantly So, Father God, let your word accomplish that which it was sent to do. I step aside that you may step forward. Help me to preach and teach with simplicity, clarity, and accuracy. None of me and all of you. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise as you seat yourself. Ships in between two places. 11 years ago, I was in between two places. 
I was at my previous ministry closing in prayer and I heard the spirit of the Lord tell me it was time to start Forward Christian Center. Mind you, during that time, a lot of things were going on. My daughter, Sierra, my oldest daughter, had just told me she was pregnant. During that time and that season, there was a lot of things going on that I really quite didn't fully understand. But yet I heard the voice of the Lord tell me it was time for me to start Forward Christian Center. In prayer, after the Holy Spirit spoke, I went over to my wife. Uh, she had her hands lifted up. I stood in front of her. And as she opened up her eyes, I said, babe, Holy Spirit said, it's time to go. She looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, babe, Holy Spirit spoke to me too. Now, mind you, at our previous ministry, we were doing youth ministry. We loved what we were doing. We loved the people that was there. We loved what, what we had going on. As a matter of fact, being a youth minister is one of the greatest jobs that you can ever have. Because you have the ability to minister to God's children, God's teens, and even sometimes God's people. But you don't have to worry about paying the light bill. Or the water bill. Or making, the, making sure the doors of the church stay open. And even during that time and during that season, we heard many people say, are you sure that it's time for you to go? And here it is. I'm in the middle of two places, two places where I would either do what God was telling me to do or I was going to do what man was telling me to do. Some of y'all going to get this because truth be told, some of us, we're in the valley of decision and we're in the middle of those places where God has clearly spoken a word to you so that you can move forward in ministry or he's spoken a word to you so you can Disconnect your life from some of the other people that you may have been connected to. Why is that? Because in order to sometimes get to where God is taking you, you have to dislodge yourself from where you are because God wants to make sure that you're going to totally depend on him. And here it is, truth be told, some of us, we're in that place where we're, we're, we're going to either do what God tells us to do or we're going to do what man tells us to do. But this is where I had to dig down deep and say, uh-uh, I ain't going to be man's man. I'm here today to be God's man. And if it's going to cost me relationships, if it's going to cost me some tears, if it's going to cost me some sleepless nights, at the end of the day, my relationship with God matters most. Because I can lose some things, but if I stay with God, I can get those things back in my life. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know who I'm here to encourage. But I'm telling you, it's better to do what God is telling you to do than to suffer with settling for what man is telling you to do. Simply put, our relationship with God, it matters. Yeah, it matters. Relationship, it matters. This is where the rubber meets the road because truth be told, when you do things God's way, everybody ain't going to be happy for you. When you follow the will of God for your life, everybody ain't going to celebrate you. But this is where you got to sit down at your own dinner table and begin to celebrate yourself. This is where you have to begin to clap for yourself on your own back. This is where you have to begin to encourage your own self in the Lord. Why? Because our relationship with God matters most. And I'd rather do what God is telling me to do than to be disobedient to his voice. So simply put, our relationship with God, it matters. And can I encourage you to be okay with following God? Why? Because being in God's will is the safest place that you can ever be. And truth be told, looking back these 11 years, God has been with us. He's walked with us. He's talked with us. We didn't suffer any lack. 
All of our bills have been paid. We didn't miss nothing. We didn't miss a beat here at the Forward Christian Center. But it was when God allowed us to see that we can trust him over the voice of man. So are you in the middle or in between two places? Are you going to choose God or are you going to choose man? I'm here today to encourage you to choose the Lord. Yeah. So here in this text, we see Jonah. He's the prophet of the Lord. Jonah, the Bible says, had received clear instructions from the Lord to go to this great city called Nineveh. The Bible says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah and Jonah being a prophet of the Lord. You would think that Jonah would have uh, the wherewithal to do what God was telling him to do. But Jonah, for whatever reason, he did not want to fulfill the assignment that God had on his life. The Bible says instead of Jonah going to Nineveh, he ended up boarding a ship to go to Tarshish. I'll say that one more time. Jonah, instead of him doing what God wanted him to do, he began to board a ship to go to Tarshish. The Bible even said he began to go away from the presence of the Lord. This is good because I believe Jonah teaches us that when God gives us clear instructions and he has an assignment on our life, we should do what God is telling us to do. But truth be told, many of us, we've gotten on some ships that we was never supposed to get on. Yeah, yeah. Some of us, we've been in some relationships that have taken us from the presence of the Lord. Some of us have gotten with some kin ships that have taken us out of the will of the Father. But God is just encouraging you right now to make sure you do what God is telling you to do. As a matter of fact, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And although obedience doesn't always feel good, it will always be good for you in your life. Yeah, yeah, so this is where we have to be careful about the ships that we find ourselves on. Yeah, yeah. So here it is, Jonah, he began to board the ship and he began to go away from the presence of the Lord. I'm talking about the prophet of God, y'all. I know some of y'all, y'all know some prophets that, 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 that refuse to speak what God is telling them to speak. Some prophets that refuse to do what God is telling them to do. These are Jonah-ish people that we see in our life. But the Bible says that Jonah, he began to board the ship to go away from the presence of the Lord. As if going away was going to give him some new instructions. I'll say that one more time. He wanted to board the ship to go away as if it was going to give, if God was going to give him some new instructions. But can I pause here because I believe Jonah teaches us that God never gives new instructions until the last one is followed. Some of us, man, we're waiting for the next word from the Lord. Some of us, we wait for the next level in the Lord. We're believing God for new dimensions. We're believing God for new portals. We're believing God for new territories. But did you do what God told you to do back then? And and this is where we can't miss it as saints because sometimes we can get so caught up into the new instead of just doing what you told. You want God to say something else, but God is saying, I ain't going to give you no more new instructions until you follow my old instructions. Until you really do my will. Until you really get into my will. And I know some of y'all, y'all get excited when people say you're about to enter into the next season. But God is saying you ain't going to get that next season until you get comfortable with doing what I told you to do in this season. So God, he never gives new instructions until the last one is followed. Proverbs 14 and 12 says this, there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. This is deep because Proverbs is the book of wisdom. 
This simply says that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. In other words, sometimes uh, some things that enter into your mind as if it's something good. But the truth be told, if it ain't coming from God, it ain't good. She might look good, but if she don't come from God, she ain't good. He might look good, bald headed, the height that you want, got the job, car, and career that you like. But if he ain't come from God, he ain't good. Y'all don't like people to preach like this. Y'all, y'all want us to say that your boy ass is, is, is right around the corner. No, 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 no. You, you, you got to do what God is telling you to do. So if he's short, bow-legged, slew foot with a cock eye, and God said that's your man, you better get that bow-legged, slew foot, short, cock eye man. And none of the women said amen. <laughs> Y'all like, I'm going to take my chances. I'm going to take my chance. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, take no chances. Take no chances if you want to. It's a way. You have some hell on earth. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. The Bible says Jonah, he got on the boat to go away from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says that while Jonah was on the ship, while Jonah was on the ship, there was a storm that came. But there was something different than this storm because this storm wasn't just a regular storm. This was a storm that came from God. And this is where us as believers, we got to be mindful because a lot of times when storms come through our life, the first thing we like to say is, oh, the devil did it. Oh, the devil is busy in my life. Oh, the devil is doing this, that, and other. But not all the time is it the devil. Sometimes it's the Lord. And sometimes it's the Lord because the Lord is wanting to get your attention. And sometimes we find ourselves in seasons and situations where hell is breaking loose. But it's not the devil that's bringing the hell to you. It's the Lord that's allowing those things to happen in your life to wake you up. So this storm that this ship was in, Jonah was on this ship. And, 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 and if I can tell the story, he was on this ship with some other folk. It was some other people on this boat. But the storm that was oppressing this ship wasn't coming to oppress these other people. It was coming for Jonah. But the other people had to suffer what Jonah had to go through. Woo, this is good. This is good because this lets me know I got to be careful of who I connect with. Or who's on my boat? Let me modernize and contemporize it. Who's in my life? Because you can go through some storms that other people bring upon your life. Not because you've been disobedient, but because they've been disobedient, but you're just facing the repercussions. I'm preaching better than y'all saying something. I know y'all want that house that's going to come. I know y'all want that car that's going to come. But I'm trying to save your life and I'm trying to allow you to keep some black in your hair and get rid of some of that gray. So the storm didn't come from the devil. It came from the Lord. So next time you face some seasons that you're not happy in, Ask God, did this come from you? Mm. And if I keep it real, all of us are somewhere in a storm because you're either going in a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. 
Some of y'all didn't say nothing, but, but those just coming out of the storm, guess what's going to happen? You're going to either go back in the storm, you're going to find yourself in the storm, or you're going to leave the storm. It's called the cycle of life. But the good news is, if you got Jesus in the storm, can't nothing rock your ship. Can't nothing rock your world. Yeah. So here it is, Jonah, man. He's on the ship. All kind of things are happening. The storm is rocking the ship. It seems like the ship is about to sink. But I've come to find out one thing about storms and ships. As long as you stop the water from getting in the ship, the ship going to keep on sailing. Sailing. And my thought is, when you're going through the storms in life, make sure you keep that stuff off of you and out of you. Because it's only if it gets in you that it begins to damage you. So, so I just want to encourage someone that's going through those storms, keep that stuff on the outside of you. If you're in the storm, you're going to make it through the storm, but you can't let what's on the outside of you get up on the inside of you. So Jonah, yeah, he's on that ship. Storm is blowing. Crew members begin to talk. I ain't seen no storm like this before. It's something different. They begin to cast lies. What, 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 what we need to throw over? They begin to throw some stuff, some, some cargo over. They begin to throw all kind of things over. But nothing happened. And finally, old Jonah said, if you throw me over, the storm will cease. And guess what they did? They threw him over. And the storm, it ceased. This is good. Because some of us, we got some Jonas in our life. But this is the time and the season where you need to start throwing your Jonas overboard. Get them out of your life. Come on, come on. Life is already hard by itself. Ain't no need to make it hard. People say if I'm going to do bad, I'm going to do bad all by my. It ain't going to be because of you. And some of us, man, we got to begin to put our foot down for those people that's in our life. Always bringing storms to us. How do we know it when, when they always got something going on? It's always a problem, always an emergency. You always need a $10 cash app. Come on, you always need a $10 cash app. Like the $10 going to change your life. It's time to get rid of those $10 jokers out of our life so we can do the will of God. Tired of them $10 friends. Come on, you can't ask me for $10 over and over and over. We got to get rid of them. And Jonah teaches us that when we cast out the scorner, contention shall cease. Let me, let me, let me peep out there. One of my favorite movies, Minister Society. I'm a gangster at heart. <laughs> I'm a gangster, I'm a gangster. But, but one of the things that I love, uh, I remember the scene, some of y'all, uh, y'all know the scenes, millennials, y'all might have to look it up on the History Channel. <laughs> but Cain came in with the grandfather. The grandfather said in so many words, cast out the scorner and contention shall cease. Cain said, Grand Grandfather, what you trying to say? Cain, you got to go. <laughs> and that's how we have to be in our life. Some people simply got to go. It's not that I don't love you no more. It's not that I'm, you know, I'm not there for you, but you just can't be in my life right now. Because where God is taking me, you got to go. And I'd rather do what God is telling me to do than to keep being hindered by you. Asking me for this, that, and the other. It's hard to do God's will when you're in there with the scorner. K 
cast out the scorner and contention shall cease. I'm telling you, if you want to live a peaceful life, get those problems out of your life. They not your problems. They God's problems anyway. <laughs> so here it is. Some storms come from people. But if we keep it real, man, some storms come from us. We just don't want to do right. Just don't want to do the will of the Father. The way of the world seems so good. But there is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is the way of death. So some storms, man, they come from people. Some storms come from us. You're either entering a storm, in a storm, or leaving a storm. But at the end of the day, all of us, we're going to have to go through some storms. But one thing I refuse to do is go through a storm for somebody else. If I'm going to go through a storm, it's going to become because I'm going through that storm myself. So the Bible says, while Jonah was thrown over water, he found himself in the water. And the Bible says, the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Jonah finds himself in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. They didn't update my slides. Then Jonah began to pray unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. And Jonah, verse 2 and 10, it says, And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah up on dry land. Amen. Verse 1 and 17, let's go back to it. Now the Lord prepared a great fish. Who prepared the great fish? Ooh. So you mean to tell me God was in control all the time? Yes, Through his disobedience, God was still in control. Yes, this is good news to us because this lets us know that even though we've made some mistakes, even though we've missed the mark, God still is in control of our lives. Yes. He has his hands on us. He still loves us. He still cares for us. And although we might not do it right the first time, I thank God that we can get it right the second time, the third time, the fourth time. As a matter of fact, I just, I'm just grateful that God is a God of another chance, that as many chances that we need, he'll give it to us. So the Bible says it was the Lord that prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days. And what did Jonah do? He began to pray to the Lord. Say that one more time. He was in the belly of the fish and he began to pray to the Lord. He didn't pray that his circumstance was changed. He began to pray to the Lord. This is where, it, as a believer, you got to understand that sometimes you can't just speak life over your circumstance. And this is where we find ourselves guilty of because sometimes we'll find ourselves in a situation where we just want to speak our way out of the circumstance. We want to decree ourselves out of the circumstance. We want to preach, pray, and prophesy our way out of the circumstance. But you've got to understand you don't have control over your circumstances. It is only God. So if you want your circumstances to change, don't just speak life over your circumstance. Speak to God and God will change your circumstance. Because we really don't have the power to do nothing without God. So instead of you speaking to the circumstance, just speak to God. Who's over every circumstance. Get that. Get that. Get that. And this is why you don't have to go to a prophet to get your life to change. No, go to the God of the prophets. Go to the God over all 
Go to God over everything. And sometimes we just want to settle and we just want to speak our way out. We're going to speak our way out. We're going to speak our way out. No, 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 no. Speak to God and he'll get you out. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord. Jonah 2 and 1, he prayed to the Lord, his God, out of the belly of the fish. And what did God do? God spoke to the fish. And the fish vomited Jonah out on dry land yeah sometimes you don't have to pray about your situation just keep praying to God God will change it all he'll move some things for you he'll shift some things for you and that's what Jonah did when he found himself in that belly of the fish he began to pray to the Lord and God spoke to the fish and the fish spit him up on dry land why did it do it because God will always meet you in the middle of two places. Will I do his will or will I do my own will? Some of us, man, we was in the middle of two places. Am I going to go back to the crack house or am I going to go to the church house? In between two places. Am I going to stay in my mess? Or am I going to make things right in my marriage? Woo! In the middle of two decisions. Am I going to go through this test again? Or am I going to walk in the triumph that God has for me to receive? Two decisions. And if I keep it real... Some of us were in that place right now where crack is calling us. But God is calling us too. Where divorce is calling us. But Jesus the reconciler is calling us too. Where God's, God's purpose and plan is calling us. But the things of the world look so much more enticing in the middle of two places. Woo, this is good. And if I keep it real, every day, all of us, we're in the middle of two places. Because all it takes is one bad text and it can mess up your life. All it can take is one bad look and it can mess up your marriage. All it takes is one bad DM, somebody coming from your past on what you done did and what you did. All it takes is one thing. And some of us, we're in the middle of two places. But I'm grateful that God is in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. I get ready to close. Yeah. God is in the middle. He found me in the middle. He found me when I had thoughts of going back to the world or being like a dog returning back to his vomit. Yeah, vomit, it sounds nasty. But many people still want it. Y'all ain't ain't saying nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the vomit. I, I done recurgitated. I done threw it up, but, but, but I'm still trying to eat it. Because she still look good. He still look good. He's still my desire. I'm married. But my heart is with her. I'm married, but my heart is with him. The side chick is about to be the main chick. The drugs is calling me. I pray. I tarry. 
I'm waiting on the Lord. But I still got to use that Percocet. I'm still hooked on those mollies. It's vomit, but it's still look good. It still tastes good to me. In the middle of two places. But I'm grateful that I chose the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Valley of decision. In the world. The world was what I knew. The world was what I loved. But I'm still being called. Woo. Even though I got a call on my life. I don't know who I'm talking to. In between two places. I know he called me. I know he want me to serve. I know he want me to love. I, want, I know he got, got keen to business for me. But I'm in between two places. I'm a prophet of the Lord. I know what God wants me to do. He wants me to speak his mind and will on the matter. But filthy Luca just got me speaking some things that God ain't say or tell me to say. Jonah was in the middle. He was in that place. Many of us, we're in the middle. We're in that place. We got to decide if we're going to follow Jesus or if we're going to be a son of the devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my Bible tells me, choose ye this day. Whom you're going to serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me close. I'm way over time. Lord, have mercy. Jonah 3 and 4. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. What? Bring it up. Jonah 3, 3 and 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time. Didn't I tell y'all? God ain't going to give you new instructions until you get ready to follow the old instructions. Here it is. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh. But Lord, I want a new word. No, no, Jonah. Arise and go to Nineveh. No, no, no. I want a new husband. Arise and go to Nineveh. No, no, no. I want to do my own thing, Lord. Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I'm telling you to preach. God ain't done with telling him that. God just telling Jonah, I still got need of you. I still got a purpose. I still got a plan for you. And no matter how far you run, you can't run from me. No matter where you go, you can't hide from me. Because when God got a call on your life, he going to keep on calling. Whether you do wrong, he going to call. Whether you do right, he going to call. The call don't stop. So you might as well pick up. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, pick up. Neighbor, pick up. God is calling your neighbor, pick up. God is calling you. You got to pick up. And Jonah. With his crazy self, he finally decided to pick up. So Jonah arose and he went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city, a three days journey. How long Jonah was in the belly of that fish? Woo, how long was his journey? Yeah, yeah. And Jonah, he began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, here it is. He's about to preach this sermon. Don't miss it. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
<laughs> he went through all that <laughs> to preach. Bring it up. Y'all want to see a sermon? This is the most powerful, but the shortest sermon. Bring it up. Yet in 40 days. And Nineveh, Nineveh shall be overthrown. When he got to the city, he just cried out. 40 days, judgment going to fall. Just 30, 40 days, Nineveh is going to be overthrown. That's his message. This is what he was running from. It seems so simple. But it wasn't. You see, Jonah didn't want to preach this message because in 2 Kings you'll find out that the Assyrians were in Nineveh. The Assyrians began to kill all of Jonah's people. The Assyrians, they killed his folk. The Assyrians, they killed the men and the children, but they kept the women for themselves. That's kind of low down kind of dirty, kind of a shame. So Jonah didn't want to do the will of the father because he didn't want Nineveh to repent. But when Jonah said judgment was going to fall in Nineveh, the king of Nineveh, he said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go on a fast. People, we're going to fast. Children, women, we're going to fast. Because we don't want the judgment of the Lord to fall on Nineveh. They begin to repent. So much, the scripture says, the animals begin to fast. In other words, the, the, the people were like, hold on. If we ain't going to eat, you ain't going to eat too. You, if I'm on a fast, this cow, this chicken, whatever. Y'all fasting too. It's in the scripture. Look at it. And the Bible says, when they repented, God's judgment didn't fall on Nineveh. And 120,000 people were saved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Y'all got to see this, man. Jonah is a great preacher because I done preached. I've been preaching for 11 years. I ain't seen 120,000 people give their life to God. But he preached judgment. They repented. And God's grace fell on the people. And 120,000 got saved. But get this. Jonah was mad. Jonah was displeased because he knew if he preached this word to the Ninevites, God being a gracious God was going to forgive them. You got to see this. Hold on. In other words, your enemies, you mad at them, but God is telling you to go to them. And you don't want to go to them because you know as soon as you go to them, God's grace and his mercy go fall on their life. And Jonah, he was mad at this. He was mad because he like, Lord, why you got me preaching this message? I don't want them to live. I want them Negroes to die. Let's see it. Jonah 4 and 1, and I close with this. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. You mean to tell me 120,000 people were saved? But it's displeasing you. And he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying? When I was yet in your country, therefore I fled before you unto Tarshish. For I knew that thou art a gracious God. Woo! And merciful. And slow to anger. And of great kindness. And repent of the, of the evil. Therefore now, O oh Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me. 
for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah was feeling this way because Jonah was carrying unforgiveness. And some of us, we're like Jonah. We want to do God's will, but we can't quite do it because we're holding something. Yes, they, they did you wrong. Yes, they mishandled you. But you still got to forgive them. They molested you. I know uncle, he shouldn't have touched you. But uncle still deserved to be saved. But you got to forgive him. And this is where it gets real. Because Jonah was a real man. And some of us, we're real men and we're real women. We've gone through some things where people have hurt us. We want to do the will of the father, but they've hurt us. We want to do what God is telling us to do, but we, we, we can't quite do it all the way because we're carrying unforgiveness. What is this unforgiveness called? It's called a root of bitterness. <laughs> it's called a root of bitterness. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, strive for peace with some folk, everyone. And for the holiness without, no man shall see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. Hold on, you better stop limiting people from the grace of God. Because if it had not been for God's grace on your life, if it had not been for God's mercy on your life, you didn't always cross the T's and dot the I's with everybody else. We all need God's grace. We all need God's mercy. We all need God's forgiveness. So no matter what they did, you got to forgive them. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. I know they hurt you. I know you broken. I know you, you wounded right now. Because some of us, we're still wounded by the words. We're still wounded by the bruises. We're still wounded by the beatings. But the same God of grace that's on our life is the same God of grace that's on their life. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. That no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled many 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 is over 50 many is over 50 anything that's over 50 is many many so many people are defiled simply because of a root of bitterness you call it church hurt no the church didn't hurt you Deacon Jojo he was the one that hurt you slandering Sally was the one that hurt you but no matter who hurt you God simply says let it go so you can grow yeah let it go so you can grow. Because if we're not careful, we'll carry a root of bitterness, thinking we got control of the root. But truth be told, that root, it really got a hold on you. Because if you can't do the will of God fully, you've been holding on, or the root has, is holding on to you. So Jonah, he wasn't called to walk away from what hurt him. He was called to walk through what hurt. Yeah. 
And some of y'all, God is calling you to walk through what hurts you. Yeah, yeah. Don't run from it no more. It's time to let it go so you can grow. And if this is for you and you got some business to do with the Lord, you got somebody to forgive, you got some things you got to get off your chest. Come on up here. Come on, let's pray. Yeah. Yeah. You're holding it up. You're holding it. You're holding it. You're holding it. Holding it. Let it go. So you can grow. Let it go. So you can grow. Building this, it doesn't stunt nobody grow. But your own. Let it go.